Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. What a pair. Chesterfield king size at the new low price. Chesterfield regular. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Mr. Dillon, I wonder what Dodge would be like if there wasn't always a crowd moving up and down Front Street. Uh-huh. Just look at them. Everybody going somewhere. <laughs> well, there are a lot of them that aren't going anywhere at all, Chester. Just drifting. Yes, sir, I guess you're right at that, Mr. Dillon. I know when I first come to Dodge, I sure didn't have nothing in mind. Leastwise, working for a U.S. Marshal like you. Oh, you must have had some reason to come here, Chester. Well, a uh, backwards-like reason, maybe. Huh? What do you mean? Well, it's like it wasn't to come here as much as it was to leave there. What? I say it's like it wasn't to come here as much as it was to leave there. Oh, oh you mean Texas? Yes, sir. Oh. oh. Why? Mr. Dillon, Texas is mostly populated by my family. I got relatives, thick and thin relatives, all over Texas. Oh, <laughs> what's wrong with that? Why, it's like having somebody looking over your shoulder all the while that makes man spooky. Well, sir, I choose to do my sinning where nobody don't know me. Hello, Matt and Chester. Well, how are you, Doc? Where are you headed for, Doc? No place, Matt. I'm just walking around. Now, you see, Chester? See what I mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, now, what's the matter with just walking around? Does a man have to be going someplace every minute? <laughs> Anyway, you're a fine pair to be criticizing people. Sitting here like a couple of fat horny toads in the now sun. Now, slow down, Doc. Slow yeah. down. You're burning up all your fuel. Well, who's this fella? Which one of you men's Doc Adams? I am. Come on, I got a job for you. Well, is that so? But you don't look very sick, mister. It ain't me. It's a man in camp. Camp? A couple of miles up the Arkansas. We're holding the trail herd there. What part of Texas you from, mister? We got 3,000 head of San Saba Longhorns. And it's been a plumb, miserable drive all the way, and I ain't no temper to answer any more fool questions. All right, then, don't answer. Now, hold up a minute there, young fella. Uh, uh, What's the matter with this man of yours? You'll see when you get there. Well, tell me now, else how will I know what to take? Look, Doc, it wasn't my idea to come get you. Ken Talley made me come. Uh, And who's uh, Ken Talley? The trail boss. Now, you ready to go? Well, you tell me what's wrong with the man, and I'll go. Doc. What? Um, I think I'll ride out with you. Who are you? My name's Dillon. Well, you're the marshal here, ain't you? That's right. Well, we don't need no marshal out there. Chester, go get our horses, huh? We'll ride out with Doc. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brought the doc, Ken. How many doctors they got in Dodge anyway, Choke? That's the doc there. Well, who are these other two? My name's Matt Dillon, Tully. This is Chester Proudfoot. How do you do, Mr. Tully? Dillon, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't send for you, Marshal. Yeah, I know you didn't. Then what are you doing here? That's a sick man lying in the blanket over there by the fire. You can get mounted and ride right back to Dodge, all three of you. We don't need doc no more. Oh, no, you don't, mister. If that man's sick... I'm going to take a look at him. He's all right, Doc. Forget him. Come on, Doc. Mm. 
Well, Doc? He's dead, man. Mighty contagious disease, too. Oh? I found that when one man gets shot, it usually leads to somebody else getting shot sooner or later. Who killed this man, Tully? How'd it happen? I don't figure it's none of your business, Marshal, but since you're so nosy, I'll tell you. He shot himself. That's a lie. He couldn't have shot himself. Why not, Doc? Because he was shot in the back. That's right. Uh-huh. You're going to tell me who did it, Tully? No, Marshal. I ain't going to tell you nothing. Tully, your man Chote here told us that you've had a hard drive up from the San Saba. Hard? We fought Indians and thieving Kansas jayhawkers and bad weather and stampedes a whole way, Marshal. But we're still ready to fight Dodge City if we have to. Well, you've been through a lot, Tully, and I know how edgy it's made you. All of you. But this man's been murdered, and i got to have the murderer. His name's Bud Cowan. Whose name? Him. There. Who killed Bud Cowan? It's no use, Marshal. I got 18 Texas cowboys here. Well, 17, and there ain't a one of them that'll talk. Look, Tully, you're a responsible man, or you wouldn't be trail boss. Now, you know what the law means. You know what it's for. Kansas law ain't for Texans, Marshal. We'll fight our own snakes. I'm not a Kansas, Marshal. I'm a United States, Marshal, but the law's the same. It don't matter. No Texan's gonna get hung in Kansas, leastwise not as long as I'm around. And there ain't a thing you can do about it, Marshal. Yes, there is. Like what? You men are kind of hankering to buck the tiger in Dodge, aren't they? Oh, say, uh, for three months, they ain't talked to nothing else. So if they don't get the Dodge, they're going to be mighty unhappy. And maybe one or two of them will decide to talk. Marshal, how are you going to keep 17 juiced-up Texas cowboys out of Dodge? They'll ride right over you. No, I can't keep them out, Tully, but I can fix it so there won't be anything for them when they get there. What do you mean? I'll close Front Street, every saloon, every gambling table, every store. I'll close them up tight. You do that? And if you knew me well enough, you wouldn't ask. Come on, Doc. Chester. You think it over, Tully. What a pair. What a buy. King-size Chesterfield. Now at the new low price, and Chesterfield regular. They're the quality twins, the same highest quality, the same low nicotine. Either way you like them, you get the same wonderful taste and mildness, a refreshing smoke every time. Change to Chesterfield, America's most popular two-way cigarette. Yes, the Chesterfield you smoke today is the best cigarette ever made. What a pair. Chesterfield regular, Chesterfield king size. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. Sure didn't take long for the word to get around, did it, Mr. Dillon? Ken Tolley followed us to town yesterday, Chester. He's smart enough to know how the businessmen would react. You mean he come in here and told them all about it? Yeah, of course he did. Oh, hello, Marshal. Hello, John. Well, here's the Dodge house, Chester. You better wait out here. Huh? Okay, sir. Mr. Green said they'd be waiting for you right in the lobby. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you came, Marshal. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Green? Well, yeah. well, no, no, quiet, gentlemen, please. I'll do the talking. Marshal Dillon, as you can see, most of Dodge's leading businessmen are present here. Miss Tompkins, Mr. Jonas. Mr. Botkin, Mr. Teeters. Yes, sir. And I'm here as owner of the Dodge House. Marshal, you know why we're here as well as we do. Because I told Ken Tully I'd close Front Street. Huh? Exactly. And we won't stand for that, Marshal. 
We need that Texas money, and we're going to get it. Gentlemen, gentlemen, a man was murdered out at that camp. Oh, he was just some Texas cowboy, Marshal. The prosperity of Dodge is certainly more important than him. Don't you agree, gentlemen? Now, wait a minute. You mean that you so-called good citizens of Dodge are putting a few dollars above the value of the law? Even above the value of a human life? Don't preach to us, Marshal Dillon. All the men you've killed. Mr. Green, I never killed a man in my life except in the performance of duty or in self-defense. <clears throat> All right. All right, that's not important. We're wasting now. time, gentlemen. I'm hired to enforce the law, and I'm going to do it any way I see fit. Now, is that clear? Well, then we'll complain about you, Marshal. Sure will. We'll all write letters to Washington and have you fired. You will, huh? Good. Fine, that's fine. Then maybe I can get a little sleep for a change. Start walking around like an ordinary man instead of jumping at shadows thinking somebody's about to shoot me any minute. Yeah, go ahead. And maybe I can afford to have a few friends again. Instead of everybody looking at me sideways like I was some kind of a rattlesnake. Gentlemen, I might not have to kill anybody again as long as I live. Yeah, you go on. Write your letters. You'll be doing me a great big favor. Oh, and just one more thing. There's just about enough money in this job of mine to pay for my ammunition. But I'm still going to close up Front Street. What did you say to Mr. Green and them other men yesterday? Huh? Why? Oh, I don't know. I'm just curious. Well, I said the same thing that you'd say, Chester. <laughs> At least I hope you would. Oh, yes, of course I would. And I sure do thank you, Mr. Dillon. I'm mighty proud to have you say that. <laughs> but you don't know what I told them, Chester. Oh, it don't matter. I trust you. You know what you're doing. Well, thank you, Chester. I'm glad somebody thinks so. Well, of course, I, I've seen you make mistakes sometimes. Well, I mean, nobody ain't perfect much. It, it, it's a simple thing for anybody. Uh, to... uh, why don't you go on to the depot and pick up the mail, Chester? Huh? Yes, sir, by going that right, Santa Fe just come in over an hour ago. And I... Good morning, Marshal. Well, Ken Sully. Marshal, this here Sam Peoples are brought with me. Huh? Hello, people. Hello? Marshal, I done a lot of thinking the last day or so. No? Yes, sir. I've decided you're right about the law and all. So I went and brought Sam Peoples in. You mean he killed that man, Bud Cowan? He sure did. And these five cowboys have witnessed it, Marshal, including myself. All be glad to testify at the trials any time you say. Is that right, Peoples? Did you kill Bud Cowan? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, what happened to your face? Fall off a horse or something? Yes, sir. I, I come loose off in the Bronx yesterday. Uh-huh. Okay, lock him up, Chester. All right, sir. Everything all right now, Marshal? Well, I'll let you answer that, Tully. No hard feelings on my side. Just don't let him get away now. One murder is all I can produce for you. <laughs> See you later, Marshal. Well, come on, people. The cells is out back here. Uh, wait a minute, Chester. Yes, sir? Uh, bring him back here. Huh? Yes, sir. Come on, people. Peoples. Tell me something. Are you a Texan? 
No, sir, I ain't, Marshal. And what are you doing with that San Saba outfit? Well, I run into them when they was bringing their cattle across the Cimarron, sir. They hired me on just for grub. And I wanted to get to Dodge real bad. Yeah, I see. That uh, bronc you fell off of yesterday, did he drop on your face? Yes, sir. Well, sort of. Mm-hmm. I'd sure like to see that horse. You would? Yeah. It'd be kind of interesting to see a horse that's got hooves like a man's fist. Yes, sir. Not much you can do about this, is it? No, sir. They're all going to swear I done it. Do you know who did? No, sir. I don't. I, I was out riding herd when it happened. And none of them fellas ever talked to me much, anyways. Well, you're in a tough spot. Yes, sir. Unless I can find out who did kill Bud Cowan, you're going to have to stand trial. But I'll do what I can for you if that happens. Thank you, Marshal. I, I don't guess there's much anybody can do. All them fellas testifying. Well, we'll see. Uh, go get him something to eat, will you, Joseph? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll be out on the street. Ken Tully's men are going to be feeling free to do about anything from now on. <laughs> I could picture Tully and his men when he got back to camp, laughing at how they'd put it over on me and the rest of Dodge. I figured Mr. Green and his businessmen had talked to Tully, but I was sure they didn't know Sam Peoples was an innocent man. And neither did they understand the kind of trouble that tampering with the law could lead to. For the Texans, the lid was off. They felt that they were running the town, that nothing could touch them. And all I could do was wait. So I went over to the Texas Trail and sat with Kitty for a while, watching the crowd. I'm glad you're here, Matt. Otherwise, I'd have to be drinking at the bar with one of those beat-up cowboys. Well, I hope I'm not costing you money, Kitty. You are, but I won't start. Anyway, it's better than trying to grin back at those cowboys. Well, those men have had a rough time coming up the trail, Kitty. Nobody asked them to come. <laughs> no, I suppose not. You know, Matt, I've worked in a lot of places, even the gold camps. Dodge is worse than any of them. Oh, is that so? Why? I don't know. Maybe the sun and the prairie take too much out of everybody. Seems like every man that comes to Dodge is out to get his own back somehow, even if he has to kill somebody to do it. <laughs> well, I guess I follow you, Kitty. All I'm saying is that maybe our hard life makes men kind of angry. They want to fight all the time. Well, something sure makes them want to fight, or at least get drunk. <laughs> Look at them. Hey, who's that coming this way, man? Huh? There. Now, that's Ken Tully, the San Saba trail boss. Well, he sure looks like he wants to fight. Yeah, maybe he does, Kitty. I will soon see. <laughs> Return for the last act of gun smoke in just a moment. Tomorrow afternoon, almost 100,000 cheering people will pack Cleveland's Municipal Stadium for that great annual baseball classic, the All Star Game. I guess there isn't a fan in the country who wouldn't like to be there. And you folks who are going will notice, towering above center field, the Mammoth Chesterfield scoreboard. Now, if you visited the American League dugout tomorrow, you'd want to say hello to the Yankees' famous catcher, Yogi Berra. He's a Chesterfield smoker. Has been for seven years. And as he puts it, they're mild and they taste great. Yogi likes the regular size. Across the field in the National League dugout, there's another man you'd want to meet. The fabulous Stan the Man Musial of the St. Louis Cards. It stands 11th All-Star Game in his 11th year with Chesterfields. Now he likes a long smoke, so he buys Chesterfield king size. What a pair they are. Musial and Barra. And what a pair these are. Chesterfield king size at the new low price and Chesterfield regular. It's America's most popular two-way cigarette. Try Chesterfields yourself. They satisfy millions. They're best for you. He 
evening, Marshal. Hello, Tally. You going to introduce me to the lady? Nobody has to introduce anybody here, mister. My name's Kitty. Kitty, huh? Well, my name's Ken Tally. How about having a drink with me, Kitty? Sorry, I'm busy. Oh, come on, you ain't busy. You heard her, Tally. Go on back to the bar, huh? You're sure something, ain't you, Marshal? Why don't you get going? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll go. Sure, I will. <laughs> Is he crazy or just drunk? I don't know, Kitty. Anyway, I'll bet he gets into trouble before the night's out. Well, if he does, there's plenty of room in jail for him. I take it you've already got a grudge against him. Yeah, I sure have. But it's not on my account. Huh? Who's? An innocent little fella called Sam Peoples. Sam Peoples? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. It's like a fight starting. Yeah. You stay here, Kitty. I'll be on the floor in a minute. All right, hold it there. Hold it. Uh, what's the trouble, Marshal? You and this man settle your differences some other way, Choke. I won't have any gunplay here. Gunplay? Well, we weren't fighting, Marshal. Was we, Jim? <laughs> no. We was just haranguing each other, so. <laughs> Me and Jim always talk like that, Marshal. Don't we, ma'am? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, look at there, Marshal. Ken Tally's running off with the gal. Sure. Rats! And I'll rub the rest of this bottle around in your face when you get up. All right, get out of the way, Kitty. Gladly, Matt. <laughs> I fooled you, didn't I, Marshal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You sort of fooled me. Tully! Now, look at him, Marshal. That ain't no way to act. What's the matter with you, anyhow? All right, shut up. What? Marshal? Is Ada us here? You think you can whip all of us? No. No, I don't, Chuck. Not eight of you. Well, then you're going to get whipped. Come on, man. Just stay where you are, all of you. I'd be a fool to mix in a brawl with all of you men. I don't aim to try it. Looks like you ain't got much choice, Marshal. And we're going to beat you about half to death. No, you're not. No? What's to stop us? Don't look like nobody in here is going to help you out. I'm carrying a gun, Chuck. <laughs> oh, that. That don't bother us none, Marshal. Does it, man? Yeah. 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 See, Marshal? We don't care about your gun. There's too many of us. Aren't you forgetting something, Chote? What? I don't wear this gun to kill snakes with the way you men do. I'll have bullets in at least three of you before you get off a shot. And you'll be the first. What's the matter with you men? He's just bluffing. He's scared half to death right now. Chote, Chote. Forget about it, Chote. Don't be egging him on. Then I'll fight him. I ain't so bad with a gun. Don't try it, Chote. You shoot me, the boys will take care of you. Don't do it, Chote, I'm telling you. Ah, what's a Kansas marshal? No. <laughs> well, who's next? Any more of you men want to die in this place? All right, then get out of here and get on back to camp. Move. Here he is, Mr. Dillon. But he ain't singing very loud this morning. How's your jaw, Tully? Busted. Doc said you busted it on this side right here. I'm sorry. I, uh, I guess I must have lost my temper. You sure did, Marshal. But the fight's out of me now. I'm plumb sober. You heard about Gil Choke? Chester told me. Choke shouldn't have gone up against you. 
No, he shouldn't. Well, now he's dead. It don't matter none, I guess. What doesn't matter? Choate's the man that killed Bud Cowan, Marshal. That's why I made him come to town for dark, kind of punish him that way. Oh? Uh-huh. Shot Cowan in the back. But I had to protect Choate anyway. You know how it is. What about Sam Peoples, Tully? Oh, him. Well, I'd have wrote you a letter from Texas, Marshal, saying it was a lie. Anyway, I'm selling them cattle. I aim to be out of here in two days, Marshal. Uh-huh. Okay, Tully. Get going. We uh, can be friends now, can't we, Marshal? You ever hear of a lawman with friends? We must have a couple. Yeah. Yeah, I have. A couple. So long, Tully. I'll tell Sam Peoples that uh, you didn't mean it. Here is our star, William Conrad. Thank you, George. You know, it's a wonderful cigarette we've been telling you about tonight. I mean, Chesterfield, of course, my cigarette. King size or regular, Chesterfields give you the taste and mildness you want every time you light up. So give them a try. They satisfy millions. You'll like them, too. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, John Daner, and Lawrence Dobkin. Parley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Filter tip smokers, this is it. L and M filters. At last, a filter tip cigarette with much more flavor, much less nicotine. L and M's miracle tip contains alpha cellulose for effective filtration. It's the filter that counts, and L and M has the best. Yes, this is it. As Patricia Morrison puts it, L and M filters are just what the doctor ordered. Buy L and M filters. The light and mild smoke. Next week, at the same time, Chesterfield will bring you another story of the Western Frontier on Gunsmoke. This is the CBS Radio Network.